everyone does the same thing in jiu-jitsu, you know what I mean? And when this new heel hook wave came about, uh, a lot of guys wanted to disregard it and they like would consider that what their team's doing is right, we don't have to worry about the, the heel hook game. And I saw Gordon and stuff having success very early on with it. And I already, I paid attention immediately. I think one of the first matches that really shocked me was uh, Gordon Ryan against like Enrico Coco, where he ran through Enrico in, at the Sapatero, and Gordon Ryan against Gabriel Argus. And matches like that, where like he submitted Gabriel Argus in under a minute. And I think a lot of people don't actually remember that or are aware that happened. So when you see things like that, that leads me in a direction for my technique. So I was like straight away, I was like, I gotta try and work out, understand the heel hook game. And then as time's gone on, maybe I got into it at the right time, but that helped me a lot. Like either I can use the heel hook game effectively in high level competition, or guys are so worried about my heel hook game that they mess up in other areas and allow openings in other areas where I wouldn't have usually got them. I'm confident I'll win, but either way, I'm going to get pretty good health insurance for that match. <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> yeah, having watched Gary Turner deal with him, I think he's a, he's a very scary guy because you assume that whatever he gets, not, even if you tap, you're probably not going to have time uh, to not get injured. You know what I mean? He's going to rip that submission a little bit further than he should. So it's a, it's a very scary match in that respect. But I think you saw Gary Tonin, as the match progressed, his confidence increased. Like he, that's what I respect so much about Gary is he'll just throw himself into the fire no matter who it is. You know what I mean? His mindset is, is, is so valuable to his game in that respect. You know what I mean? Like he fought Pajares, threw himself into the fire. Pajares was going after his leg. Gary was getting the better of the exchanges. And I think he injured, injured Pajares pretty badly in that match. But yeah, oh, that would be a huge studying point for this to see how he avoided the outside heel hook. What I think is interesting is... Uh, the outside heel hook is much more valuable for MMA because when you apply it from bottom, you turn your opponent away from you, so it's harder for him to strike. But uh, the downside to the outside heel hook is usually it's way harder to get a submission on a guy. They're not going to tap. They'll take a few pops. Where the inside heel hook is a much more devastating submission, but for a guy like Paharis from MMA, it's a much scarier one to go for because your opponent's still going to be facing you. So I think that's that's the catch-22 with his game. I think it's harder to avoid the outside heel hook, but it's also, like I said, harder to finish. So I th uh, it'll be an interesting match because I play Z-guard, so I leave my, my foot right on the hip there. So we'll see uh, if I actually do that in the Pajares match. Still, still respect, yeah, respect that outside heel hook incredibly. He changed the game, I think, in that uh, traditionally heel hooks, people would throw a reap and they would put their hips on the floor. It would be a low reap. So you would strike a reap at the knee and try and bend the knee. And what made it difficult to finish the heel hook there is it would be actually quite easy for guys to slip the knee out. What Paharis changed was that when he applied a reap, he used the, his foot to keep his hips super high off the ground. And that meant that as both opponents rotated, they couldn't clear the knee. And even if they did start to clear the knee, he was very good at turning it into a knee bar. And you saw that against uh, David Avalon. David Avalon slipped the heel hook, but the knee bar hyperextended his knee. So I, I did watch a lot of Pound in 2011, but I didn't start doing heel hooks until I qualified in 2014. But I started doing heel hooks in 2014 out of a fear of getting heel hooked myself. And I think that fear probably came from watching what Pound did in 2011. I think everyone started to fear heel hooks after that. Before that point, I'm not sure they had, they had such a, such a, I guess, a polarizing image in the sport. But yeah, fear from watching him do what he does probably uh, pushed me into the heel hook game as well. Like Pajares, haven't watched his matches. I don't know. I mean, my cardio is not great. I don't think his is great either. So I think with a guy like that, he fought Gary Tonin and gassed throughout the match. But Gary Tonin, being far smaller than him, wasn't able to capitalize on Pajares' gas tank. I think that would be something I would definitely look to capitalize on, which is, which is also dangerous because if I do 
you use a heel hook or something to sweep Pajares, coming on top is usually where he likes to enter the legs the most. But yeah, trying to, I would want a great gas tank for that match for sure.